Good evening, everybody. Welcome back. This is our Tuesday, January 16th combination meeting of our organizational and regular meeting. Uh, just like we did last year, uh, everybody take a second to silence your phones uh, before we start the meeting, and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with and justice for all. And uh, one other thing, just before we we, uh, we get rolling here with uh, roll call, uh, the meeting is just going to blend together. We're not going to do the organizational meeting and then close it and then reopen again um, for our regular scheduled meeting. So uh, with that being said, uh, Mr. Hatfield, please take roll call. Absolutely. President McFarland? Here. Vice President Rausch? Here. Secretary Hatfield is here. Treasurer Lauterbach will not be here tonight. Uh, Member Blazy Here. Member Ringgold? Here. Member Horowitz? Okay. Uh, our first action item is election of a temporary chairperson. And uh, the temporary chairperson is typically a role filled by the sitting president. Uh, but in order to have that appointment, we've got to do it by motion. Make a motion to appoint Scott McFarland as our temporary chairperson. Second. Motion by Mr. Roush, support by Mrs. Ringgold. Any discussion regarding item two? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I am the temporary chairperson. Uh, next up is item three. This is information only, identification of the district's legal status. Uh, under the revised school code MCL 380.1 at SEC, the district's legal status was defined as general powers school as a general powers <coughs> school district effective July 1, 1996. Next up, item four. This is an action item. This is election of the officers of the board. Uh, as listed in the agenda, uh, we can see the uh, election of the officers of the board is outlined in board policy 2506, a three-person board of education nominating committee submitted a proposed slate of officers for 2024. The proposed slate is as follows. President, Mr. Phil Rausch. Vice President, Mr. Scott McFarland. Secretary, Mr. John Hatfield, Treasurer. Mr. John Lauterbach. That is the proposed slate. Are there any additions to the proposed slate? Okay, nope. I will take a motion to adopt the proposed slate. I move that we adopt the proposed slate of officers. Support. Okay, a uh, motion by Mr. Hatfield, support by Mr. Rausch. Any additional discussion regarding item four? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we have our new officers effective immediately. And with that, I will turn this meeting over to Mr. Rush. Well, thank you, Scott. Before we uh, move on, I just want to say thank you for your leadership. I don't know how long you've been president, but it's probably been four years. Four years. Yep. And as, in, as we all know, the public school districts have gone through a lot in the last four years. Uh, Midland was not an exception, so thank you for your steady hand and leadership and, and uh, always taking a step back and taking a deep breath before making a decision. So appreciate your leadership. Well, thank you, Phil. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Item number five for information are appointments for the 2024 study committees. Um, just run through them quickly. Administrative services chair would be myself, member Ringgold and Lauterbach as well. Finance facilities and operations, the chair would be Mr. Lauterbach, joined by Mr. Blazy and Mr. McFarland. Um, curriculum instruction and assessment, chair Mr. Blazy, joined by members Horowitz and Ringgold. And then human resources, chair Mr. McFarland with members Hatfield and Horowitz uh, joining on that. Other committee appointments, the Gerstacker Teacher Proficiency Awards Committee would be John Lauterbach, Distinguished Service Award Committee, John Hatfield, um, Advisory Board on Instruction in such Sex Education and Birth Control, Jennifer Ringgold, District School Improvement Committee, Brad Blazy, and then the MPS School Board Association reps at the Claire and Gladwin RESD would be myself and Mr. McFarland. Item number six for action, scheduled meetings for the 2024 calendar. 
the Board of Education is required to give public notice of the dates of its regular meetings and any special meetings. The recommended regularly scheduled meetings are as followed in the packet. Uh, I will accept a motion to approve the dates listed in the board packet. I will move for the first time in four years <laughs> <laughs> to adopt the dates listed in the board packet. I support. Uh, motion by McFarland, support by Hatfield. Any discussion? Uh, just noting that April 15 is a uh, budget workshop and regular meeting starting at 630. Special meetings. There are special meetings on that. And the 20th is a Tuesday of February, not a Monday, because of the holiday. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Item number seven are the appointments, designations, um, appointments, designation, and Board of Education Matters 7.1, appointment of the Board of Education's legal counsel. The firm of Thrun Law PC has been designated at the, as the Board's legal counsel. In addition, the superintendent is authorized to retain specialized legal counsel through other legal firms as appropriate. It is recommended that the Board approve legal representation as outlined through December 31st of this year. So I move approval of uh, item 7.1, appointment of the board's Board of Education's legal counsel. I'll second. Motion by Hatfields or by Horowitz. Any discussion? All in favor of item 7.1 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 7.2 for action, fiscal designations and authorizations. Superintendent Miller Nelson. It is recommended that the board designate Huntington Bank and any other public depositories qualified in accordance with MCL 380.1221, the revised school code of Michigan as approved depositories for the school district funds through December 31st of 2024. The treasurer of the board of education excuse me, is the legal financial mm -hmm. officer for the school district and as such is authorized to sign checks for Midland Public Schools. The superintendent and associate superintendent of finance are the only members of the staff authorized to sign checks for the Midland Public Schools. It's recommended that the board approve this authorization through December 31st, 2024 for these staff members. And you'll note that we've used Huntington uh, for several years now and feel that we're being well served by them. Accept a motion for item 7.2. I move to approve uh, fiscal designations and authorized as needed. Support. Motion by Ringgold, support by Hatfield. Any further discussion on item 7.2? All in favor of appoint, appointing Huntington Bank, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. <clears throat> Item 7.3 for action, personnel authorizations. Great, Penny. just as we've done in previous years, uh, it's recommended that you authorize the superintendent or designee to sign any legal documents relating to personnel actions, which the board has approved. This authorization has been made at the organizational meeting for the entire year rather than granting authorization at each board meeting. It's recommended that the board continue this authorization through December 31st, 2024 to the superintendent or designee. It is further recommended that the board delegate authority to accept resignations, retirements to the superintendent of schools or designee through December 31st, 2024. Resignations, retirements will be reported in subsequent agendas. I'll accept a motion for 7.3. I'll move to adopt item 7.3 personnel authorizations. Support. Motion by McFarland, support by Horowitz. Any further discussion on 7.3? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? A okay, motion carries. 7.4 for action hard cap 
for Employees Medical Benefit Plan, Mr. Rutin. Thank you. Uh, Public Act 152 of 2011 gave public employers two options in which to choose in contributing to employees' medical benefit plans. One option is contributing 80-20. 80% of the plan. The other is following the state's statutorily set hard cap limits. Midland Public Schools has historically used those hard cap limits and those are integrated into all three of our collective bargaining agreements. And we are asking that the board reaffirms our commitment to following the hard cap method for our employees' medical benefit plans for this fiscal year. I'll accept a motion for item 7.4. I move for approval of item 7.4, approval of hard cap for employees' medical benefit plan. Support. Motion by Hatfield, support by McFarland. Any further discussion? All in favor of approval of 7.4 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 7.5 for action administrative Assistant authorization. Yes, this is where uh, you authorize my designee, which is Sarah, uh, to assist uh, the secretary of the board in all matters related to elections through December 31st, 2024. And we know that that's a lot of work and we're grateful to have Sarah doing that on your behalf. Thank you. I'll accept a motion for item 7.5. I'll move to approve item 7.5, administrative assistant authorization, as outlined on the agenda. Support. support. Motion by McFarland, support by Hatfield. Any further discussion? All in favor of item 7.5 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 8 is the consent, consent agenda. 8.1, approval of the minutes from December 18th regular meeting and the December 18th special meeting. Item 8.2, the below staff is recommended for hire as listed in the agenda packet. Item 8.3, the below staff have announced their resignation effective of these dates as listed in the board packet. Item 8.4 is approval of the payment of school system bills for the month of November 2023 as listed in the check registers prepared by Ms. Holderby in the amount of $8,399,696 is recommended. The distribution of obligations by fund is included in the documentation. And finally, item 8.5, approval is requested to authorize legal payments to the below list of professional legal fees as outlined in the agenda packet. We'll accept a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move to accept the consent agenda items 8.1 through 8.5. Support. Motion by Hatfield, support by McFarland. Any further discussion? Um, the Allen Group invoice is not itemized again like it was last month. Um, I approve everything else in the consent agenda except that one document. I just wanted to note that the minutes from, I don't remember if it, the reg, if it was the regular or special meeting, special meeting um, they had some weird spaces in them. I know we had a similar issue last month. And then I do have a question on Thrun Law Firm. The $2,500 annual retainer fee, do we draw it down from that fee? Do we know Great for question. certain? <laughs> I, I don't wanna act like I'm confident yeah, yeah. in my answer. I'm not certain of that, but we can find out. Feel like we do, and I think a long time ago somebody asked that question. Yeah. I think I the answer is yes. I don't remember. Any further questions or <clears throat> clarification discussion? All in favor of the approval of the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item nine, um, Board of Education Matters, presentations to the board, 9.1 are ours. The best part of the night, shining stars. Oh, we'll just set these here. Sure. 
All right, let's see who's first. Kathleen, come on up and stand by me. Welcome. Thank you. you can stand right here and look at all these beautiful faces. <laughs> Uh, Kathleen Wegner, we're so excited to give you the shining star. Kathleen's MPS journey began in 2021 when she was hired as a paraprofessional at Adams Elementary, the position she currently holds in the district, which is why you see this awesome group of Adams folks. Uh, she earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice from Ferris State University. She was uh, nominated by an MPS colleague, and among the comments were the following. So soak this in. You are a shining star to everyone you encounter. Your contributions to the well-being of the Adams community are top-notch. You're instrumental in helping students navigate drop-off in the morning, during lunch recess, at dismissal, and trips to the office during the day. You're self-motivated, proactive, and go above and beyond what is expected in the usual school day. You care for each and every student and staff member, as well as every member of the school community. Your warm and welcoming demeanor makes people feel at ease, and you are a valuable part of the Adams Elementary team. Congratulations. It's a double dose of Adam's awesomeness tonight. <laughs> uh, so it worked out for all of you who are here to celebrate two of your team members. Susan Price is our second shining star. Susan joined the MPS team in 2008 as a kindergarten teacher at Adams, and it's where you are now. You've stayed there your whole time. That's awesome. Susan earned her Master of Arts degree in Communication Disorders from CMU and a Bachelor of Arts degree in Special Education from Michigan State University. You were nominated by a colleague who has these amazing things to say about you. You are an exceptional kindergarten teacher. You welcome students and create a wonderful classroom environment. You're calm, which I know from being in your classroom, you are calm, and interact with students and create lessons and academic centers that cover the curriculum in creative ways. You are a great communicator with parents and create partnerships to help their children learn and grow. You spend lots of time planning and preparing for your students, and you have mentored new teachers in the kindergarten grade level over the years and continue to make a positive impact at Adams. Congratulations. Thank you. So for you. Oh, I think Dave wants a picture. Congratulations. You are always welcome. You're always welcome. Yeah, we love having people. So move on to item 9.2 for action, approval of the MPS emergency operations plan, Mr. Jaster. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Public Act 436 of 2018 required that districts adopt emergency operation plans or EOPs as most uh, school staff refer to them as. <clears throat> it further required that these plans be adopted and reviewed in conjunction with at least one law enforcement agency. For us, that's Midland Police Department. Uh, and vul vulnerability assessments also had to occur. And the original adoption, just for some history, uh, the first plans had to be adopted by January 1st of 2020, and so they require review and uh, adoption every two years, but we make them an annual part of our summer prep for school. So um, 
I'll get back to this statement here. These EOPs are reviewed annually. Approval is requested by the Board of Education every other year. The EOPs are retained in the office of the Associate Superintendent and they are shared with MPD in hard copy. They have them on file at their headquarters. And that is due to the confidential nature of the information in these plans. Um, just one other item for consideration because it's relevant to this. The piece about um, regular review with the MPD. They did full security assessments at each one of our school buildings last year. And since the start of the 22-23 school year, I meet with Chief Ford and Lieutenant Mahabir monthly, and we hold our meetings in different buildings each month. So since the security assessments have occurred, we've also met with principals and other administrators in each building and have regular conversations around security at each site. So again, just related information um, relevant to EOPs. Thanks, Jeff. We'll accept a motion to approve item 9.2. I will move to approve item 9.2 of uh, the MPS emergency operating plans. Second. Motion by Ringgold, or sorry, motion by McFarland, support by Ringgold. Any discussion? I say, Jeff, thank you for your attention on this, and obviously a, a mm -hmm. warm thank you to the Midland Police Department for their assistance as well. Yep. Any further questions or? Clarification. All in favor of approving item 9.2 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 9.3 for information MPS cardiac response plans. Jeff. Thank you. Yes, Michigan law requires that schools also maintain written cardiac emergency response plans, uh, and these need to be accessible. So in our schools, these are typically located in all AEDs with or in the containers that house the AEDs. The cardiac plans must contain um, information about recognizing signs of cardiac arrest, calling 911, the proper use of CPR and AEDs until EMS arrives. All schools are in compliance with this requirement and the review uh, and update of these CERPs is part of our planning and prep for each school year, as is uh, the EOP that we just discussed. So um, just, uh, again, some related information. AED testing is conducted every year by our nurses and our health professionals and then to make sure those are fully functional. We also have um, CPR certification requirement for our coaches, our PE teachers, all of our administrators, and then it is offered annually as an extra PD, PD option for any other staff who would like to be you know, certified for CPR. Thanks, Jeff. Item number 9.4 is an update on the superintendent search process. Um, since we last met as a board, um, just trying to go through the, the action items that have been completed, uh, I believe all board members have completed their interview with HYA on an individual basis. And then um, we also closed the survey that was open to the community Jen, what did you say, 1,200? 1,200, I wrote it down. 1,246 responses, 158 students, 730 <coughs> parents and caregivers, 800 community members, I'm sorry, 88 community members, and 270 staff members. Excellent. So thank you to everyone that had their input through the survey. And then um, just over the last week, we also, the HYA also completed 20 focus groups uh, with various community members, and thank you for the flexibility given the weather. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much with the, uh, the Zoom help as well, Dave. So, um, so now we are going into, um, just completed that HYA is starting to um, summarize so that we'll have a report of all of those focus groups as well as the report from the survey um, which are now available in the, the board member portal. Excuse me. And then um, next up on the timeline, which is posted on our website, is the presentation of district leadership profile on January 29th in this room at 6 o'clock um, for a special board meeting. 
that's next in the process. Um, additionally, right now, just for awareness, the um, advertising for the opening is, is out and people can apply uh, for the position as well. Any questions or clarification? Just want to make a comment that the focus group I attended was very well run. Uh, Mike ran it. Uh, we almost went over in time, even though we only had a few people there. So I hope that all the others went just as well. So I can comment on that, John. I did have a chance to talk to uh, Mike Ritchie, who called me as, after he finished his final focus group. Um, he said the focus groups were, in his opinion, very well attended. Um, they had very uh, robust conversations really good question answer sessions um, overall he was very very pleased with the diversity um, in the breadth of our community that that showed up to these uh, focus groups so I just want to say thank you to everybody who took time out of their day to um, let their voice be heard because we really want to know what you think and, and what this community wants to see in the next superintendent um, so he is as Phil said he is digesting all that information he and his team and they should have a, a, an executive summary for us, which we will, of course, share um, as soon as we get it. Thanks. So that closes out Section 9. Um, section 10 is request to address the board. Ms. Bonadies. Good evening. Um, Renita Bonadies, as you probably know. Um, welcome to the new year. I wanted to just bring to attention um, FOIA fees and something I found had changed because as I've mentioned at a previous couple of board meetings, the FOIA fees that I've been charged, I felt were excessive. They weren't properly accounted for and I was asked to pay without any actual accounting on them. Um, just told this is what it's gonna be you need to pay it so I submitted a request per the FOIA handbook that I found online on MPS website that said that FOIA feels fees could be appealed to the board president well then I received a call from interim superintendent informing me that um, that process was not valid that handbook online was not valid um, that actually it had been replaced with the Thrun policy manual, which now said the only way a person could challenge FOIA fees is you have to take you to circuit court. So no longer can we put in a FOIA request and challenge the fees without going to court. So I guess that gives you kind of liberty to charge us whatever you want, unless we want to take time and money now to take you to court for those fees. Um, and I guess with the lawyers on the board, they may have already figured that out, but the public, we didn't know, kind of like we didn't know Robert's Rules of Order went away either with that thrown policy update. So we don't have the policy manual from before. We don't have a complete listing of the current one because we have to go through it item by item online. So it's available, but not easily comparable to what we actually lost as the public. Um, and in that FOIA that I did pay those fees for, I never even received the information I requested and I made comment of that and still never received the updated information and uh, just for the record there are other organizations and public organizations in this county that when I put in information requests they actually just give us the information they don't even charge us for it so MPS used to do that historically. There were a few of my FOIA requests I didn't get charged, but now we seem to get charged for any little thing that we ask for. So, and Joe and I were on two of those focus groups that were just held last week. One of them, there were four of us on it, and the other one, there were 10. So I, we were kind of disappointed there wasn't more participation from the community on those two focus groups that we did attend on Sunday and Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bonadies. Greetings. Uh, I was very impressed with the HYA search firm's actions, list, actions last week 
and I look forward to their report. I really wish the meetings had been better publicized, but I did do agree they got a diversity of perspectives. Now let me give you a little background. I moved to Midland in 1989. My first awareness of the Board of Education was the very first sinking fund proposal in 2004. Lots of great public relations to sell it, and then a thud when the first thing done was to put a University of Michigan quality football turf in the stadium. The PR damage control was impressive, but it left a bad taste in the mouth of many residents, which led to the failure of the second sinking fund proposal in 2013. I enjoyed the recent special meeting reviewing the MPS facilities and some versions of plans forward. I have two issues to raise. Student population. In the late 1990s, MPS was over 10,000 students. Today, it's less than 8,000. So MPS is down 20 to 25 percent over 25 years, closing schools along the way. When you did the planning for those future facilities, was there a prediction of future student populations in the mix done by a disinterested party? I asked because United Van Lines released their annual survey last week, and Michigan is the fifth highest state for outward migration. Moving on, your Cadillac taste may cost you again. I was concerned about the discussion at the facilities meeting that Midland needed a new stadium facility on par with the very best in the state, Grand Blank. Do we really need to have the very best of anything used occasionally when that which is used for the daily core mission of education needs attention? Finally, I'm going to go down the road of equity, not the DEI version, but grassroots. The state of Michigan takes money from the people in many ways and give some of it to MPS based on headcount. The majority of taxpayers have the perspective that a school is to teach reading, writing, math, science, hopefully how to think, not what to think. We are not sacrificing a percentage of our wages and the annual scalping, called a millage, of our alleged property value for indoctrination. The citizens are the most important stakeholders, not the DEI enabling corporations. So you are going to put up a new bond proposal to maintain the buildings and some, something else to be determined. I would say right now that the bond proposal should be voted on at a major election and not buried in a minor election, which would typically have a low turnout since you need the people who you're going to tax through the, through the millage to have a voice. Specifically, it should be considered voter suppression to not have it when the voters would be turning out already. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. There, any anyone else want to address the board at this time? Okay. Close the floor. Brad, do you just, if I may, ask, um, we had a uh, independent um, consultant for population growth, correct? Over the last year that you've been working with on the bond and school population and what we're doing with that. I guess that'd be for Bri yeah, Brian. Yeah, Brian does Brian. that Brian. on our behalf. Yeah, actually, we just ordered one and received it recently in the fall. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> 11, uh, curriculum instruction and assessment. 11.1 uh, is for action, major change proposal. Honey. Yes, I brought to you last month for information, back for action on our major change proposals. Uh, you might remember that we have IB Mandarin 4, 5, 6 for grades 10, 11, and 12. This will complete that series for our IB Mandarin pathway. The total cost is just under 14000 and that is for curriculum and staff development and materials and resources that we need. And as usual, uh, this is all dependent upon final approval of the budget in June, but we're asking for your approval of this proposal uh, today. Thank you. I'll accept the motion for 11.1. I make a motion to approve 11.1 major change proposal for IB Mandarin 4, 5, and 6. Support. Support. 
Motion by Ringgold, support by Hatfield. Any further discussion on 11.1? .1? All in favor of approving 11.1 .1, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Just as a quick clarification point though, um, there was there was no CIA meeting. Oh, thank you. In December, correct. There, there would be no study committee minutes. Right. Okay. Good catch, thank you. Uh, 11.2 for information textbook adoption. Yes, I have for you tonight um, for information a geometry textbook that we'd like to purchase. This is part of a process that we have mapped out for refreshing <coughs> and renewing our math books and geometry is next on the list. So this is geometry with calc chat and calc view. Uh, it's big ideas which is the series that we are using primarily now in our high schools by Larson and Boswell. We followed the standard process where teacher leaders have led a group of math teachers in reviewing this and um, vetting it carefully, and this is our selection. This will come back to you next month for your action. It's available in my office if anyone wants to preview it and take a look. Perfect, thank you. Item number 12 is finance facility and operations. 12.1 are the study committee minutes from January 8th, 2024. Brett. January 8th, 2024, FFO minutes. Location was here at the MPS Administration Center. Present were John Lauterbach, John Hatfield, Penny Miller Nelson, and Ryan Bruton. First thing that were covered were the November financials. They were reviewed. Uh, variances from year to year were attributed to the MC MCV tax settlement and the purchase of Evolve Security Systems. Salary formula modification, feedback was sought on potential modification to the MCEA salary formula. Number three, CTE equipment purchases. Administration will recommend equipment purchases for the welding and auto tech programs utilizing 61C funding. Number four, floor painting. Administration will recommend award a floor painting contract for various MPS buildings. Capital improvement and food service funds will be utilized if approved. Number five, food service equipment. Administration will recommend the purchase for various food service equipment items. Food service funds will be utilized if approved. Number six, overhead doors. Administration will recommend awarding a contract to replace overhead doors at Dow High and Midland High. Capital improvement funds will be utilized if approved. Number seven, facility study. Feedback was sought on the December presentation. Administration will begin to connect with other board subcommittees and draft a timeline for stakeholder feedback sessions. Next meeting will be Monday, February 5th. Perfect, thank you. Item number 12.2 for action auto tech program equipment purchase. Brian. Thank you. A review of the current equipment in the auto tech program showed a need for upgraded instructor and student workstations. Administration is recommending that if 61C funding becomes officially approved from the Midland ESA that a purchase order for the equipment identified in your agenda packet be issued to Snap-on Industrial of Crystal Lake, Illinois for a total price of $170,668.30. The pricing was procured through the state My Deal contract and does follow board purchasing policies. Thank you. I'll accept a motion for approval of item 12.2. I'll make a motion to approve item 12.2, purchase of auto tech program equipment. Support. Motion by Hatfield, support by McFarland. Any questions or discussion? All in favor of approval of item 12.2 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 12.3 for action food service equipment. Brian. Thank you. Bids were solicited for various food service equipment items to be utilized all throughout the Midland Public Schools and our kitchen areas. A complete list of the equipment was attached to your agenda. We are recommending this evening to issue a purchase order to the low bidder, Stafford Smith Incorporated of Bay City, Michigan for $256,288. And if it does have your approval, we will utilize food service funds for that purchase. I'll accept a motion for approval of item 12.3. Move to approve 12.3, food service equipment purchase. Support. Motion by Ringgold, support by McFarland. Any discussion? Did we only get one bid? 
one RFP respond to. Okay. About six hundred dollars apart. <laughs> um, Brian, this will keep us working on our compliance for our food service balance. Working towards that compliance, yes, sir. Perfect. Any further discussion? All in favor of item 12.3 say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item 12.4 for action, floor point painting. Brian. Thank you. Bids were solicited for kitchen, cafeteria, and bathroom floor painting throughout the Midland Public Schools. Areas that will be receiving work include Adams, Central Park, Chestnut Hill, Dow High, Midland High, including the welding locker room, Plymouth, Siebert, and Woodcrest. Uh, we are recommending issuing a purchase order to the low bidder Lake Painting Incorporated of Midland, Michigan for $102,447. And if approved, the payment will be split between the capital improvement and food service funds depending on the area being serviced. Thank you. I'll accept a motion for item 12.4. I'll make a motion for approval of the floor painting bid, item 12.4. Support. Motion by Hatfield, support by McFarland. Any discussion? When will this take place? This summer. Some work over spring break if we can get it in. Any other questions or comments? All in favor of item approving item 12.4 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 12.5 for action welding equipment purchase. Brian. Thank you. <clears throat> Quotes were solicited for various equipment pieces for the welding program. The equipment includes a welding cobo cart, wire reel kit, tooling tabletop, tooling clamp kit, thick plate welding software bundle, and the applicable setup and training. Administration is recommending that if 61C funding becomes official, through the Midland ESA that we issue a purchase order for this equipment to Purity Cylinder Gases of Wyoming, Michigan for a total price of $112,169.82. I'll accept a motion for 12.5. I'll make a motion for purchase of welding equipment. Uh, action item 12.5. Support. Motion by Hatfield, support by Horowitz. Any questions? Discussion? Brian, when the ESA reviews you know, these, I, I guess we have three that are looking at 61C, do they take it as one review or each individually? Each individual program has their own review process where they need to affirm that their advisory groups have met, that all the compliance measures are met. We are very close to getting thumbs up on a vast majority of these. And when we do get those thumbs up, that's when we issue the individual purchase orders. But we hold them until we get confirmation from Don Johnson over at the ESA. Okay, thanks. All in favor of approving item 12.5, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item 12.6 for action ventilation units for the welding program. <clears throat> Brian. Thank you. Um, quotes were also solicited solicited, excuse me, for ventilation units for the welding program. This equipment includes 15 portable fume extraction units and the related accessories. We are recommending that if that 61C funding becomes officially approved by the Midland ESA, that we issue a purchase order to Purity Cylinder Gases of Wyoming, Michigan for a total price of $39,816. We'll accept a motion for approval of 12.6. I'll move to approve item 12.6, uh, the issuance of a purchase order for the ventilation units for the welding program. Support. Motion by McFarland, support by Hatfield. Any discussion? Brian, do the accessories cover the safety monitoring aspect of those to make sure that they're I believe actually so. functioning properly? These were actually recommended by the advisory group. It was kind of a change okay. in plans from what originally was proposed, and the advisor group was the one that um, thought this would be the best solution to some of the issues that they were having in the welding lab. Okay. And then do we, do we contract with, like, a OSHA rep or certified installer that can independently verify the 
effectiveness of them or? It's a great question, Phil. I can okay. follow up on that and okay. get Thank you an you. official answer on that. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor of approving item 12.6 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 12.7 is for action overhead door replacement. Brian. Thank you. Uh, bids were solicited for the replacement of overhead doors at Midland High and HH Dow High. A complete listing <coughs> of the locations was attached to your board agenda. We are recommending issuing a purchase order to Lloyd's Door Systems of Midland, Michigan for $66,845.40. If this does get your approval this evening, we will utilize capital improvement funds for replacement of those overhead doors. We'll accept a motion to approve item 12.7. I move, oh. okay. I move for the approval of item 12.7, replacement of the overhead doors at Dow and Midland High. Support. Motion by Hatfield, support by Horowitz. Any discussion? Brian, do you just want to comment on the work that Mike did to solicit additional bids? Yes, we actually put this out for bid twice and extended it one of those times as well too. Made several phone calls to people try to get them to bid on this and Lloyd's was the only people that would actually put the bid in. We have vetted Lloyd's. We've worked with them many times in the past and do trust that their pricing is fair and believe in the quality of their work. We're comfortable moving forward with them. Thank you. All in favor of item 12.7 say aye. 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 Any opposed? And Brian, I think you're about at the end, but item 12.8 for action. We're gifts, getting there. <laughs> gifts totaling $20,000. Thank you. Because of the size of these gifts, they do require your approval this evening. There are three gifts totaling $20,000, as you mentioned. The first from the Strohsacker Foundation, $10,000 for all four secondary schools to receive feminine hygiene products. Um, Midland High from K Systems, the robotics team, a gift of $5,000. And from the Sally J. Moss Living Trust, a $5,000 donation to benefit the Young Fives Developmental Kindergarten Program over at the Pre-Primary Center. Great, thank you. I'll accept a motion to approve 12.8. I'll motion for the approval of, approval of 12.8 for gifts totaling $20,000. Support. Motion by Horowitz, support by Ringgold. Um, any discussion? Just wow on the generosity of our community again. Yes. Uh, all in favor of approval of item 12.8 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> item number 12.9 for information gifts totaling $6,125.50. Brian. Thank you. For information only this evening, we'd like to express our gratitude. As you mentioned, for the 11 gifts totaling $6,125.50, they represent a wide variety of items, ranging from supports for field trips, robotics, media centers, athletic equipment, and athletic equipment. Per tradition, all donors will be recognized on the broadcast credits of this evening's presentation and also through board correspondence. Thank you. Item number 13 is human resources. I'll note um, before we move on to item 13.1 that the HR study committee did not meet uh, in December and therefore we don't have any meeting minutes. Item number 13.1 for information, the board and staff extend their deepest sympathies to the following families, which Jeff will give uh, some more commentary on. Thanks, Phil. Um, first, um, Ms. Sarah Lindsay passed away December 18th, 2023. Sarah was employed first as a teacher at the Chippewa Nature Center from uh, 1975 to 76, but then joined MPS and worked at Jefferson Intermediate from 1976 until 1985. She was also the coordinator of K-12 Science from 1985 until she retired in 2001. Um, she retired with 25 years of service. Um, second, to the family of Miss Nancy Ann Christensen, she passed away December 19th, 2023. Nancy was employed as a teacher at East Lawn Elementary uh, during her time with MPS. 
And then lastly, to the family of Miss Joanne M. Letzkes, she passed away December 28, 2023. She was employed as a paraprofessional at Siebert Elementary, Midland High School, and Leopard during her tenure. She retired in 2007 with 29 years of service. Thank you, Jeff. Item number 14, our correspondence to and from the Board of Education. Item number 14.1 is for information letters from the Board of Education to the following individuals and entities listed in the board packet. <clears throat> Item 15, our scheduled activities for information. 15.1, all meetings are regular and special meetings of the Board of Education begin at 7 p.m unless otherwise noted as listed in the board packet. At this time, um, item 16.1, are any points of clarifications, or comments from the Board of Education members? I just wanted to say thank you to um, Interim Superintendent Miller Nelson about the clear and effective communication keeping our students and staff safe um, over this last weekend. Um, and then also noting from today's communique and also a photo from the Midland Daily News about a project between our high school students at both high schools and United Way um, making Valentine's Day cards for Meals on Wheels. So um, what a wonderful collaboration with a community partner. I know it was briefly touched in our committee meeting earlier today, but I was also asked by someone in between these two meetings if there was an update on the boilers. So I wondered if that could be presented or something, at least what we're working on. Brian, you want to take that one? We yep, had just, some action here recently. Yeah, we just discussed this morning. Um, we received a repair estimate, and we weighed the benefits of a repair estimate versus a total replacement. And we made the decision this morning that we're going to move forward total replacement. Um, and we are also going to solicit quotes to replace to others that are of the same age as well, too. So you should see coming to FFO soon and then ultimately to the board meeting, um, total replacement of three boilers over at Dow High. The one currently remains offline. The other two are online, are completely safe and functional. But we want to be proactive, especially when we have these cold snaps and make sure that we keep all of those boilers running safely and efficiently. Action's okay. coming to you soon. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anything else? Item 16.2, Smiller and Austin. Yeah, so these beautiful cards and books are in honor of you all. January is School Board Recognition Month. I think it's really special that our students take time to make cards and so personalized uh, some of them with pictures of each of you, which is, is extra special. The books are purchased in your honor and will be donated to our media centers, our elementary media centers. I just want to uh, take a moment personally to thank each of you for your dedication and service. You come to this leadership and work um, with a passion to do the right thing for our students and our staff and our school community. And uh, I think you mentioned this, Phil, when you were honoring Scott, there's been some tough times and you all persevere through that, keeping clarity about our student-centered approach and our mission statement. And we, I and we all absolutely appreciate you for that. It's a great board and really thankful that you're all sticking together and keep making the next best decision that's in front of us. So thank you for your service and uh, enjoy your cards. I wanna also on that same note of gratitude, uh, as Jen said, you know, we had some inclement weather last week and those decisions are not taken lightly as I communicated to you in the Friday letter. And I just wanna thank everyone for their patience and their grace and their collaboration and making sure that our students are safe our city and county workers who were out working to make sure our roads are as clear as they can be uh, to get us to school safely this week, and I know they'll continue to do that. And same gratitude to all of the electricians and line workers and skilled folks who came to our community to help us restore power. We were really thankful we didn't lose power, maybe a little blip here or there, um, but our buildings remained safe and with power throughout that storm. Uh, we know it's cold this week. We just ask families to make sure their children are bundled up when they're waiting for the bus. 
We do monitor temperatures and we'll continue to. Our elementary and middle schools, um, through Jeff's leadership, are pretty aligned on even recess and what it looks like to send kids out for recess. So uh, just know that we'll tend to that. And uh, finally, uh, Jen mentioned, but I'll just kind of double down, uh, Martin Luther King Day um, is a special day for all of us. It was extra special to know that the United Way partnered with us in the way they did. Uh, Joy did a great job along with Tila and Scott at our two high schools and teachers um, at, at each of those schools to really create this special opportunity to create these really lovely cards, very heartfelt sentiments that students were writing in these cards, knowing that those will go out to over 800 homes on the um, Meals Through Wheels program and senior services. And it was just, I think we all paid a visit over there at some point to Dow High and Midland High yesterday. Kids were really having a great time and keeping centered that spirit of volunteerism. So we're very thankful for them and that partnership with United Way. Okay, on to big things. What's next? <laughs> Thank you. Um. Yes, thank you, Scott. My pleasure. Did you enjoy making lots of motions tonight? I did. It was great. What a we noticed. We noticed. <laughs> I appreciate not getting the silent treatment. So I appreciate you making that. Yeah. 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 I can make a motion. <clears throat> 17? Yes. Go for Ready? It. Yes. I make a motion to go into closed session, consideration of attorney-client privileged communication pursuant to Section 8H of the Michigan Open Meetings Act, MCL 15.268H, regarding legal opinion. Support. Motion by Blazy, support by McFarland. Any discussion about going into closed session? All in favor of approval of going into closed session, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. So moved out of closed session. Um, Brad? Uh, after reviewing our regarding legal opinion of closed session, I make a motion to review documentation for fulfillment of step three of the MCEA grievance on our January 29th meeting. Support. A new motion by Brad, support by John Hatfield. Any discussion? All in favor of reviewing documentation to, s to fulfill our obligations in step three of the MCA contract, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. That completes our agenda for tonight. Um, any points of clarification? Accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Support. So moved. All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.